Welcome to the Should A Bit More podcast presented by Goal Boys. Coming up on the show today, Gil Alexander of a numbers game. We will discuss what was an epic Super Bowl, an absolutely gut-wrenching loss. If you're the 49ers, just another incredible victory by the Chiefs as the Chiefs are the Super Bowl champions. They get it done. They win it in overtime, 25-22. to We'll start with the 49ers. If it leads, it bleeds. We'll start with San Francisco. And I think the one thing that they wish they could have back, and we'll get into the decision to take the ball in overtime because I do think that's a debate. But I will go back to second and five at the end of the fourth quarter. 49ers take over the same position the Chiefs were in last year against the Eagles where they got the ball. The Chiefs did with like seven minutes left last year against Philly in a tie game where you think, all right, if you play your cards right, you can – run out the clock, kick a short field goal, and the game's over. That's exactly what happened uh, where they kick a field goal and there was only like a handful of seconds left, and the Chiefs won the game by a field goal. The 49ers were in that same position. The Chiefs only had two timeouts. 49ers were moving the ball. Uh, They got the ball six and a half minutes left, and they moved the ball right away. Big play, another decent game, and the clock's running, and it looked set up where, all right, the 49ers have this game. They're moving the ball on the ground, the air, And second and five, right around the 36, 37 yard line uh, at the two minute warning. If you just run the ball there three times, you're probably going to get the five yards. If you just run it twice, you're probably going to get four at least where you can go for it on fourth down and then get, get yourself in a position where you get the first down. And at worst, you miss a kick at the end of regulation and go to overtime or, you, you know, you make the kick and the game is over. Giving the ball back to Mahomes, and they almost lost it in regulation, which was ridiculous. How they let Kelsey get that many yards in that spot, I thought the way they played defense uh, at the end of the game was terrible. But to me, the second and five running the ball was where this game was lost for San Francisco, not running the ball in second and five and throwing it. They got a yard with Kittle, then they had to throw it on third and four. No, second and five, you're not guaranteed to get yards running. But I really think, hey, second and five, you hand the ball to McCaffrey there. He's going to get you three, four plus yards. You're going to get your five. If you just give it to McCaffrey three times there, you have all these versatile players, creative play calls, run the ball three times there and get yourself in a position where you can have the kick be the final player regulation. Give Moody credit. I mean, I know he missed an extra point, but he made some big kicks. That was a clutch kick uh, at the end of the fourth quarter there. If they missed that, Mahomes is basically a couple first downs from field goal range. That was a a ballsy kick. He nailed it. He, He kicked it right through and he made a long kick early in the game too. And he set the Super Bowl record for longest make and then Buck- Butker broke it uh, later on a quarter or so later. Might have been early third quarter when Bucker made the 57 yarder. So boy, there's a, a game like this. There's a million plays you can go. There's a million different directions. I thought there was a grounding on Mahomes that they didn't call on the game tying field goal. So there was a bunch of game tying field goals. There was the one where it was after the Moody extra point was blocked. It was 16, 13, and the Chiefs had to settle for a field goal. There was a play in that drive where Mahomes was under pressure, and he threw it to nobody. Nobody was on your screen. I don't care how big your TV is. There wasn't a Chief on the TV screen. I don't care how big your TV was. Uh, and They didn't call grounding. Nobody even said a word about it. And that could have been a big play in the game, but look, a game like this, there's a million big plays. I know uh, Boomer Sison said at halftime that the McCaffrey touchdown, the first touchdown of the game, it should have been a legal, uh, a legal man downfield. I don't want to turn this into the ref you know, the the ref review show because you can go in a million different directions with these refs. I thought the refs were fine, but I did think that was a grounding uh, on Mahomes that kind of got glossed over. But boy, uh, just just a gut-wrenching loss for the 49ers. And and we'll mention the overtime here too. I would have taken the the ball second. I would have played defense. First of all, if you get Mahomes in a fourth down, when you have the lead, he's going to go for it. Obviously, he has to go for it. If you make him go first, they might be a little more conservative, say, hey, we don't have to go for it here. So a fourth and one, they might go, they might have punted it away. That fourth and one, if you're getting him in the same position where uh, Mahomes got the six yards, if that game is tied and it's the first possession, they might say, all right, we're playing good enough defense, we'll punt it away. You make Mahomes less aggressive if you give him the ball first. And then if you get a three and out, you can win on the field goal. Also, if you you know what you need, if you give up the touchdown early, if you give up the touchdown on the first drive, you can match with the touchdown and then either go for two with the win. And that's probably the way to go because after the first two drives, it does go to sudden death again. So I would have gone second. I understand, hey, you get the third at bat first if, if you take the ball right away, but I would have gone second. I don't think it was egregious, but I do think it was a mistake. Um, and, and that's how I would have played it. Again, I understand where Shanahan was coming from, but for me, the second and five, not running the ball and taking the ball first instead of second, I would have, I would have rather had it second. I would have rather had Mahomes 
look, when, when you're playing Mahomes and you're putting Mahomes in a position where he's behind and it's in four down territory, that's not good a good position to be in. You want him where you, you put that little bit of doubt where, hey, they don't have to score here. They could play defense. You want to make him more conservative. So that's how I would have played it. And look, if you're the Chiefs, uh, just obviously, you know, you wonder <laughs> – are, are they ever going to be in a situation? Are they ever going to have a season where they're just not either winning a Super Bowl or competing? I mean, this is now six years for Mahomes in the league, three titles, four trips to the Super Bowl. In the two years he didn't make it, one of his guys was offsides that would have put him in the Super Bowl uh, on an interception. And the other, they blew a big lead to the Bengals a couple of years ago at home where, where Mahomes was actually really bad in the second half. I mean, he's a player two away from being in six Super Bowls. Um, and who knows with how many rings. Now, he could have lost any of these Super Bowls and they could have easily lost last year. Should have lost last night. Could have lost the first 49ers Super Bowl. Uh, it's almost like LeBron. It's almost like Brady, where a lot of these guys, that when they go to the, the finals or the Super Bowl, you could make a case, hey, they could have won so many more. Yeah, they could have lost all of them too. So a lot of these were coin flips. The fact that he has three probably feels about right. Uh, but boy, what, what what an incredible player. I mean, he can run. He can throw. Uh, he is on track to be. I know people say, hey, Brady's got seven. Mahomes has three, and there's no counter to that. Mahomes is better. I mean, Mahomes is just better. He can run. Um, he, he just, he's got that element where he can escape pressure. He can, you know, take off and run for 10, 12 yards anytime he needs it. That's a huge weapon. Uh, and he basically had no receivers. I know Kelsey played well tonight. Uh, and by the way, Kelsey, you cannot hit the coach like that. That got glossed over too. You cannot, I, I know, you know, he probably didn't mean it. He's fired up and he just wants the ball. He wants to stay in the field. You cannot basically plow over your coach like that. That's a no, no that you can't do. And I thought that did not get enough attention. That was a bad look. Uh, they shied away from that on the broadcast. That was a terrible look. He, I mean, Andy Reid, Andy Reid's 60-something years old. You can't go over and plow him over. That you can't do. You can't put your hands on a coach. I know you technically put his hand on him. You you, you got to stay away from the coach. You got to be able, It's one thing to yell at him, and even that, you know, nobody's yelling at Belichick like that. Nobody's yelling at Parcells like that. Saban, have a little more respect, but to plow him over like that, I thought was completely ridiculous. But give the Chiefs credit. I mean, they just find ways to win. It would have been a brutal loss for them to lose this game. Uh, and when you have a great game, it's a it, – you're in a position where whoever loses is going to be heartbroken and think they had a million opportunities, but it's much worse for the 49ers because they haven't won. I mean, the chiefs, if they lost, say, you know what? We won it last year. We won it before we have Mahomes. We'll be back. The 49ers. This is one of the worst losses you could ever have. You haven't won. You've been close. I mean, you think about it from 2019 on 2019, they lose the Super Bowl with a 10 point lead to the chiefs. 2020 will, you know, it's the pandemic. Garoppolo got hurt. You wiped that out. 2021, had a lead second half, 10 point lead second half against the Rams below that one. 2022, they, uh, they get play the Eagles. Purdy gets hurt, lose that one. And then this year again, with the 10 point lead, Shanahan has been in the Super Bowl three times. If you include his trip with the Falcons as the offensive coordinator has had a 10 po plus point lead in every single one. And he's on three. It's just it doesn't get more painful than that. It really is. It, it's, it's about as bad as it, it, it gets. It's just, it's becoming a little Buffalo Bills from the 90s. It's really that bad uh, in terms of being so close and not getting it done. If you had won one or two, you could live with it. It's obviously painful regardless, but the fact that they haven't won, uh, just a terrible loss. And to me, it, it comes back to the end of the fourth quarter. And really, if you want to go further, I mean, they should have been up a lot more than they were early in the game. McCaffrey fumbles early, which was kind of canceled out because Pacheco then fumbled early going in. Uh, for, for the Chiefs, uh, a drive or two later, but it felt like, I mean, there was at one point where it was 72 to six in terms of yards. And the only play the Chiefs really had in the first quarter was that big throw to uh, the big completion of Hardman, McCall Hardman, who actually started the year with the Jets and ends up went, catching the game winning touchdown pass. I mean, you can't even make it up. It's just, man, man, the Jets. He's, he wasn't good enough to play for the Jets, but he's good enough to be on the field to uh, to catch the winning touchdown for the Chiefs. But that's really all the Chiefs had in the first half was that play. It felt like the 49ers could have been up by 13, 14, 17 points and could just never pull away. It's like a baseball team that leaves runners in scoring position. You just, you have, you know, you have the bases loaded in the first inning, you don't score, bases loaded in the second inning, you say, all right, we've had our chances, you know, we're getting to this guy. Those chances don't always come around again. And I'm sure the 49ers, their fans have to be absolutely sick to their stomach, just a gut punch of a loss for the 49ers. But a great game. This game was very symbolic of the rest of the regular season because at times the, the product wasn't great in the NFL, bad quarterback play, bad offense. But at the end of the day, this league always delivers and it delivered last night, just a great Super Bowl. So we will discuss this game in further detail with Gil Alexander. That is next. This is the Should Have Bet More podcast.
All right, we are back. Should have bet more podcast. Excited to talk about the Super Bowl. He is the host of the numbers game at beating the book, beating the book megapod. Gilly, we are uh we are going through this together just minutes after the game. We'll we'll start with just a, a classic Super Bowl. Uh I'll start with Shanahan here. Did you, there were a few things that I think he's going to be questioned about in, in the next coming days. We'll start with I thought second and five, right at the end of regulation, the, the 49ers last drive in the fourth quarter, I thought second and five, you run it, run it three times, you can own the clock, you can run it out. Did you have a problem with that set of downs? That's where he went to – that's where he went to Kittle. He went to Kittle for a yard, and then third and four got batted down. Yeah, because uh, Spags brought the house. You know, in the moment I didn't, after the Kittle play happened, of course I was like, oh, I would rather would have run that there. But, but to be perfectly honest, like I didn't – you know, I think that's a little bit of armchair quarterbacking there. I, I didn't have a huge problem with it. Yeah, I just thought they were gashing him on the ground. And, of course, it's playing the results a little bit. If Kittle catches the ball for eight yards, that game is basically over. And you can just uh, – it was the situation the Chiefs were in last year with the Eagles where you got the ball with that perfect amount of time where all you needed is four or five first downs, run the clock, and you could have ended regulation, could have ended fourth quarter with a kick, where at worst you go to overtime. If he makes the kick, you win. If, if he misses the kick, you go to overtime. How about not taking the – or how about taking the ball to start overtime? Did you have a problem with that? No, and I think this is going to be a huge talking point tomorrow that I'm going to talk about on a numbers game because the conventional wisdom from everybody, and people are just like adamant about this, is that you should defer there. Um, Stevie Fezzik and I had a long talk about this uh, when we went to the gym at <laughs> – at Caesars about a month and a half ago talking about, you know, what happens if this happens in the postseason? What should you do? And everybody, like if you read articles about it when they made the rule change, you know, even the articles that you read are like, oh, it gives you a chance to defer. You know what the opponent is going to have, right? A field goal or a touchdown or whatever. Um, but that's not the main point to me. The main point is by receiving, you put yourself in a two for one situation. And that to me is more important than any of that other stuff where it's like, oh, no, you got to know what the other team does. This is not college where you get the ball at the plus 25 yard line um, where it's fair ups. Once two teams do what they do, if it matches, then it is sudden death at that point. And so that's your advantage receiving the football. So I think you absolutely receive the football there. There's going to be a lot of second guessing on that, and I don't agree with it. I didn't have a major problem with it, but I do see it where let's just go through the scenarios. If you play defense first and you get a stop, a three and out, which nobody thought they were getting a three and out. And here's the other thing. When you go on offense first, you put Mahomes and you score, you put Mahomes in four down territory, which you don't want to do. You want to make Mahomes uh, play conservative and punt there. So if you can get the three and out, you win with the field goal, which is a good thing. Worst case, you give up a touchdown. Okay, now I need the now I know what I need. I need the touchdown. I'll, granted, I sacrifice that third possession. But hey, if they score a touchdown and I match with a touchdown, I can go for two and just win it with the two. So uh, I didn't have a major problem with it, but I, I might have gone for two. You don't you don't see that or you don't, you don't agree with that line of thinking? No, I, I absolutely agree with everything you're saying. What I object to is people who are saying it's absolutely wrong and it's just like college. Well, it's not absolutely wrong. Oh, it's and not. It's not, it's not. Like college. You know, it's neither of those two things. And and it's very interesting that there's a group think on that. And it's I, I don't think that's the thing. You know, people are going to look for for big mistakes here. There was not a big mistake a la – Shanahan end of second half against Green Bay, that kind of thing, or, you know, Dan Campbell going for two point conversion from the seven or uh, Dan Campbell running the football with three timeouts left, you know, towards the goal line in that game against the Niners. Those three things are objectively wrong. I don't think you have an objectively wrong thing in this game decision wise. Uh, and we'll move on from Shanahan, but the last one here, and I'm, I'm sure this will get talked about too. The end of the, the the sequence before the end of the first half, where Shanahan just Kansas City's got the ball. Shanahan has got timeouts, yeah. but he's just letting the clock run. He could have had 45, maybe 50 seconds yeah. left, like close to a minute. But he said, "You know what, Kansas City, you do what you want, and I'm basically just going to take the ball and go to halftime." Then this is kind of what annoys me more. He runs a draw. Like you're not going to take that draw for 80 yards. There's a better chance of fumbling. There's a better chance of McCaffrey blowing out his ACL. If you want to take a knee, just take a knee. If you want to be conservative, just be conservative all the way. So I, I didn't love how he handled the end of the half. It doesn't surprise me. What shocked me is he went for it that fourth down in the fourth quarter. So he's usually conservative. That 
that that surprised me. But I don't know. T- t- take it wherever you want to go with those two decisions. No, I I agree with you about the end of the first half. He he did botch that. It, you know, again, it's one of those where could they have done something with it? Maybe we don't know that they would have. They still would have been behind the eight ball with forty some seconds left. But yeah, I mean, is that a is that a dereliction of duty to some degree? It is. Um, but these, you know, none of these to me are on the Mount Rushmore of Shanahan mistakes, right? Like these aren't even close to being, you know, could you argue, well, you know, it's a game that went to overtime and all these little things matter. Sure, uh, they do. Um, but so does a missed extra point, you know, an extra point that was blocked. And I know Moody made up for it tremendously with 250 plus field goals. Um, but there's so many things in a game like this. I just thought that the Niners drive stalling. I, you and I and, and uh, guys were on the group thread with. The main theme we had through this game was how many opportunities the Niners had in the first half for sure and really the first three quarters of how many opportunities they had to extend this lead. And we said on the radio for two weeks, if a team goes up two scores – man, is it going to be tough to come back from. And I think that it it felt that way in this game where it was like, okay, if the, the, how many times could the Niners have just like put this away, it felt like, and they could never do it. And if you leave the door even that much ajar for the greatest player on earth, this is what happens. And, and to me, the difference was, and, and you're right, you're completely right. I mean, you see this in any sport, in baseball, if you leave the bases loaded the first two innings, you can say, hey, we had our chances. We're going to get in this picture. Yeah, you had the bases loaded twice and you had no runs. Like that comes back to bite you more times than not. And that this was a similar thing. It almost reminded me of Alabama, Michigan, the, the uh, college football title game. Michigan came back and they got away with it. But remember, Michigan had a bunch of chances to put that game away early and uh, they were a yard or two away from losing that game. So, boy, it, it's not a good thing when you leave a, a great team, a great champion like the Chiefs, more opportunities to beat you. It, it usually doesn't end well. And uh, to me, the difference was they were getting pressure on Mahomes. The, the Chiefs looked so out of sorts offensively the first uh, half, three quarters. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of what the point was when the Chiefs finally got going on offense. And then they went to they, they got to a point where, and that was surprising because the 49ers defense had played so poorly, but they got to a point at the end of the game where they just, like you said, they, they couldn't get off the field. Yeah, there was a brief moment in the first half where Chase Young was your early MVP. Oh, Imagine that. Um, yeah, the Chiefs started the game – by, um, well, recovering that fumble by, you know, that was the first Niners gaffe, right? They, they matriculated the ball down the field. The Niners did on the first drive, but then uh, McCaffrey fumbled. Um, so the Chiefs got that, um, you know, and then they got the ball on offense. They went three and out. The next time they had the ball, they punted. Um, the next time they had the ball was that long pass to Hardman where Tashawn Gibson just sort of stopped playing and then Pacheco returned the favor by fumbling. So, you know, and then that the next time they had the ball, still still got zero points. Young induces the intentional grounding on first, and it was another three and out. So that was the only time after that that the Niners went up two scores, 10 to nothing at that point. But the Chiefs didn't get points till that next drive. And we're talking about with 20 seconds left in the second quarter, right? They got a field goal. That was the first points of the game. Like there was a moment there you thought to yourself, could we be watching the first Super Bowl shutout ever, which is now just hilarious to think about, you know? I mentioned Shanahan getting away from the run on that second and five uh, before the end of regulation at the end of the fourth quarter. Did you have a problem in general? Just did you think he got away from the run a little too much? Because, man – they were, they yes. were, like you said, they're covering them up early. They went 101 minutes, I think Nance said on the, the broadcast, without a first down. Uh, you, you thought they got away from it a little too quickly? Yeah, I thought at the end, at the beginning of the first, at the beginning of the third quarter, right? They're up 10 to three. Kansas City starts out with the ball. Um, and it's a three and out, was it? Or was that the uh, interception? Didn't, the, didn't uh, the interception field. was right away to start the third quarter. Right. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right. So um, Pacheco fumbled the pitch to start that court you know start the quarter so they were behind the eight ball and yeah and then um Jair Brown picks off that pass from Mahomes and that is when so the Niners get the ball and they end up with a three and out of their own and I just thought like that was just that they they threw three times on that three and out the next time they got the ball after after forcing a three and out Shanahan again with three passes although the second and third down they were behind the chain so they had to but you had six plays six passes to start that half 
And, you know, it's like that was another opportunity where they could have extended the lead, just gash him a little bit. And they didn't. They just were. They just that was clearly and that's when Greenlaw hurt his Achilles for, you know, so, so it was. That's the thing. I, so I guess what we're saying is that there wasn't to me, there wasn't any of these, you know, massive moments that were clear mistakes. But it was this body of work where he just it just felt like every opportunity that was there, they sort of they sort of just didn't maximize their chances of capitalizing on it. And and for sure, there's there is blame to go around on that. But then, you know, the, I mean, what's the biggest play of the game? Arguably, Daryl Luter having the ball hit him in the back of the foot on that punt. You it's know, a good one. It gets lost. A, a game this great, there's just, you know, you almost yeah. have to go back. There's so many that uh that just get lost in the mix. Oh, my God, I forgot about that play. There are so many twists and turns. It's just such a great game that, yeah, that that I mean, that's certainly in the mix. Or the, you could say the Butker field goal where it looked like it could be a high snap. It could be – I mean, that's disaster. That was oh. – Chiefs are uh, down a touchdown. They hadn't got anything going. If that kick is either missed, blocked – then 49ers are on a short field, and then then the 49ers do put the game away. They could just never get in a position where they, they deliver the knockout punch. The replay of that is unbelievable. Like, how did yes. Gregory not block that? How was that not blocked? That's incredible. And something like that happens, you're just like, well, let the psyop conspiracy theorists go to town. Like, there it is. Um, it was just incredible. And, you know, every play – but but but, you know – Late in the game, as 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 inept as the Chiefs' offense was early, and you're right, they just couldn't get it going early. You just look at it from a certain point, and they every drive was field goal minimum towards the end. Right, they just couldn't really be stopped. And Spags deserves tons of credit on you know calling the defense. Also, it's still funny at the end of regulation too, when the Chiefs were matriculating, there were ten seconds left. They had the ball at the eleven, and Romo's like, "Oh, that extra second's big." And then as soon as they had the four second play with six seconds left, he's like, ah, oh, there's not enough time. You got to kick the field. Yes. <laughs> that, yes. Uh, that's great. But I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think like, what's my biggest feeling about this game besides losing a uh, exacta that I had, which was San Francisco beating Kansas city at 11 to one, which was my final of all my exactas. What's my biggest takeaway. I think my biggest takeaway is, is that, which is the Niners will look back at this. I think it was Todd who said it during the game. The irony is the Niners lost, excuse me, the Niners won Great two point. playoff games. They won two playoff games. They had no business winning and they lost the Super Bowl that they had no business losing. It's a great point. It's almost like, what was the postseason? Almost 10 years. It, it was the one Seattle lost to New England. Remember they went through that whole chain where like Detroit shouldn't have beat Dallas. Dallas shouldn't have beat Green Bay. Green Bay shouldn't have beat Seattle. Then Seattle, who shouldn't have been there, they gave it away to New England. It's very similar to that where I I totally agree where, uh, you know, it's well put where, man, this is their this was their best game in a lot of ways. Offense, defense is the best their defense looked by a mile. Uh, oh, yeah. Where does this rank Super Bowl wise? I know this will be a, a discussion too. I mean, everyone is always in a rush to say this is the best ever, greatest ever. I mean, it's. It's up there. I know it was good. If if it didn't go the way you wanted, that certainly affects how, how people feel about just generally. What what were your thoughts? Like, is this an all timer for you? Um, you're right that your bets do affect it. So if you if you remove that, you you do your best to remove that. It went to overtime, so it's only the second one in history to do that. Obviously, the New England Atlanta one was the other one. So it's got to be, you know, it's certainly top half automatically, right? Sure. Because of that that because it's that competitive. But it wasn't exactly a classic in terms of like how many great plays will you remember? You know, I think that's the thing. Like, I don't know if I can remember any great plays that were like highlight reels for the rest of time. Like not even one. Right. And we remember that Super Bowl 10, Lynn Swan leaping over a defender. Right. You know, um, you know, there's so many iconic plays in Super Bowl history. Montana to Taylor. We can go through them all. I don't know what the play was other than the final touchdown, which is a three and a half yard little hitch to Hardman. So I, in that respect, I don't know that it's one of the five greatest Super Bowls of all time, despite the fact that it went to overtime. Um, but what can you say about the Chiefs? I mean, to me, the real thing is not where does that Super Bowl rank? Where do the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes now rank? His mm -hmm. third Super Bowl title in six years, fourth appearance, He's still in his twenties. Um, 
I guess you have to do it by Super Bowl titles. So in that respect, Brady's got six and or Brady's got six or seven, seven. Um, and you know, guys like Bradshaw and Montana still have four. But this dude He's better than feels, all of them. He's better, he's the best one I've seen. Yeah, it feels like besides Brady, I mean, you still have to give Brady the nod. He's probably number two at this point. Brady's more accomplished. Yeah, Brady's more accomplished to me. Uh, I I never thought Brady was this good because Brady, like that fourth and one where Mahomes runs, like he Mahomes has the running oh, yeah. to it, where it's just. I mean, and I meant to ask you about this too. Did you think they were getting off the field on that second and fourteen? That was the one time when Hardman went backwards. That was the one time, end of the fourth quarter overtime, where it were like, oh, that was a bad play. Now they can do whatever. Like, they were just so they were on their heels. It was they were almost defensive that entire fourth quarter drive on that last, you know, two, three drives. That was the one point I thought maybe they could get off the field. Well, you were talking about an overtime, I think. Right? Yes. Not even yes. I, I mean, the last two, three drives, they were just playing so badly. So like tentatively where they were just, um, you know, it's almost like a prevent defense. They finally got in a position where, all right, second and 14, the chiefs are behind the, the sticks. At that point, I thought, all right, maybe they're going to get off the field and actually do it. Yeah. It was the, the Niners go up three and then, yeah, it's first, it's it first remember gets the fourth and inches after Hargrave makes yes. that play on Pacheco and Mahomes gets the six yard run. Right. And so then it's, you're right, the pass to MVS where he gets sort of swung back from a gain to a loss, second and 14. They get it to third and seven. And then it's the huge play to Rice. Right. That just like completely gets them out of that predicament. Now keep in mind the Niners field goal drive, remember they were in jail. And they yes. called that defensive hold on Good one. Yep. Was, was it who was it? Was it McDuffie? Yeah. So I mean, there's so many little moments oh like that, God. like you said, where you're like, I mean, games that if, if they don't get that hold, the, the Chiefs probably easy peasy walk away with it in overtime, right? Um instead How about the first play of overtime. It, it was, I think it was a pass to Debo, which was a terrible uh, play. It was like for a four all you're gonna do is get uh, four or five yards, and it's a, a tick away from getting intercepted, and and that would have been game over there, too. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. That was one where it was like did that hit the ground. Oh, I don't see the Chiefs arguing. I guess it hit the ground. Thank God. Um it's, it's there's so many little ones. You were seized on one. I want to remember where this one, where's the where this was. I think it was a fourth quarter drive. Don't hold me to this. And I think the Chiefs were down three. I could, re I wish I could remember exactly. I think it was 16 to 13, San Francisco. And the Chiefs, it was a drive that they ended up settling for a Butker 24 yard field goal um, to tie it, even though they had first and goal at the four. And the Niners made a stand. But earlier in that drive, if I'm thinking about the right drive, Mahomes throws it over the yes. middle to no one and they don't call it intentional grounding at all. He sort of was going down. He throws it up in the middle of in between. Total throw away. Players. Nobody on the TV yeah. screen. I don't care how big your TV TV was. There wasn't a chief there, and they gave him a break because it was the middle of the field. I feel like if it's out of bounds, they call that. But that's a terrible call or a terrible non call. I don't think the announcer said a word about it. That could have changed the game because that that put points on the board. Where who knows? 49ers get the ball back, and maybe that never happens. Yeah. Um. It was a weird game like that, though, Will. Yes. Right? Because it's like. There was no highlight of, you know, that we will remember many years from now. Like, I can't think of one play that really stands out as like the signature play of the game. And yet there were so many little moments where both teams, like both teams, I, you know, I, I went through this play by play after logging the game thinking, oh, it's all about the Niners missing on opportunities, which by and large is true. On the other hand, the on the other hand, like the Chiefs squandered a bunch of shit too. Sure, right? It, it was the Bacheco fumble. You know, there was there was other things in this game where they didn't capitalize on it. I mean, that missed extra point, man. The missed extra point's interesting though, right? Because if he makes the extra point and they go up seventeen to thirteen, do the Chiefs settle for that field goal? No, they probably don't with like a little less than six minutes left in the fourth quarter. So that could have changed the entire trajectory of the game from that point too, right? It looked like it would help them for a moment because it, it would have come down to a fourth down where you're up by four. The Chiefs probably go for it. You never know because Reed's conservative, but um, it almost bails you out where they're not going to go for the touchdown to kick the field goal. And 
yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It looked for a while like that missed extra point was a big blessing in disguise. Also, like this will get washed because the, uh, most of the guys came back with the exception of Greenlaw. Greenlaw clearly rupturing his Achilles, which is just brutal. Awful. Right? Just brutal to be so excited to go back on the field and then pops. It's just like the worst. But at different points in the game, besides that, first of all, Purdy got horse collared early and like his knee buckled for a second real early in the game. I was like, oh boy. McCaffrey got his leg wrenched underneath him. I was like, oh my God, he could have fucking gone out. Sorry for his cursing. I apologize. The uh, But the other ones, Kittle got hurt and came back in. Debo got hurt and came back in. Um, that's the Niners. That. That's the that's the Niners. They're brittle. They're always, yeah. you know, they're they're always on the brink. They're always teetering. They're you, they're all a little, you know, if you play fantasy football, they're all you, you always have to monitor. Hey, this guy gets down. You're always getting the alert that Debo, McCaffrey, Kittle. They're just they and McCaffrey stayed healthier with the Niners than I thought he would when they traded for him. But that's an issue with all of them. You're right. You're right. I, I said this to you off air. I'll say it to you here on the show. Did you think? I guess this was the other thing that bothered me about this game. In in the same spirit of. Is there this if there's is there's this great highlight? I felt like Nance and Romo, while Romo wasn't making stupid comments like he has in some other games, I felt like they didn't capture the excitement of the big moments in the game. I don't know if that was just me, but I felt like if it were another announcer, like if that were Ian Eagle, uh, it just would have felt bigger in those moments, just to use one name. So I, I kind of felt like that was sort of a subdued part of the game too. I didn't think the commercials were particularly great. Oh, they're not good anymore. They're not yeah. good anymore. Uh, oh, here's a question. Who would have been the Niners MVP? If Jennings. I think you're right. And that might be the play we were talking about. What would be an iconic play that, that, uh, screen for a touchdown, which looked like, I mean, it was in the air forever. It looked like it had oh. disaster written all over it. That went that went to McCaffrey. That might have been the one, the iconic play that you remember, because I mean, not, not that many yeah. times. I think they show the stat: Foles and Jennings are the only two guys now in Super Bowl history to catch and throw a pass, a touchdown pass in the same game. So that might have been the play. And imagine if you had Juwan Jennings at like three hundred. Three hundred. We had to have hedged out or something. But maybe you're one of these people that doesn't yeah. hedge. Maybe okay, could you have hedged out and taken the Chiefs? Maybe you couldn't have because you're like, man, I'm not a hundred percent sure Jennings will get it, so I can't. I can't put this huge money line bet on the Chiefs because I'm not positive Jennings will get it. And then I what if I middle myself and they give it to Purdy or McCaffrey? That's interesting. So, so I mean, for all those reasons, right? Like just all of these things are are so interesting. Do you think I mean Andy Reid, like we asked this question about Shanahan. Andy Reid didn't do anything wrong, did he? Like I can't think of anything he did wrong. I thought they were a little conservative running early on when they were just weren't running for any like it looked like they were just wasting downs running the ball early, but no, I, I can't say he did anything egregious. But the more I think about it, I really didn't like the second and five throwing the ball with Shanahan. To me, you run it three times there, and you're yeah. going to get a first out in pretty much in the game. That bothered me a little bit. I think then a little bit more than it bothered you. If this, well, no, I mean, it, it in retrospect it bothers me, but like in the moment, I can't. I, I'd be lying if I said right. I was like, oh, I can't believe they did that. I guess here's a question: If this were a Sunday game in the middle of the early window. And let's say it wasn't the Chiefs. So, well, you can't really say that, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like if it wasn't two more key teams. If it right? was Buck Saints, it would be like it would it would get washed away. It would it would get washed yes. away, right? Like there was nothing that specifically awesome except for the stakes, right? The stakes of winning it all, despair if you lose, everybody having bets. And it just being the finality of it all and all the pressure involved. But if, if this exact game with this exact game script happened in the middle of a Sunday slate, I, I don't know if I'd even spent a whole segment on it, right? I'd be like, oh, let's move on to the next game. In a way, it sort of embodies what the NFL was this season. Because how many times did we text back and forth? Man, if it weren't for betting, would we be watching this? We text on a Sunday in the middle of a one o'clock window where bad quarterback play and, you know, Zach Wilson and DeVito, just bad quarterbacks all around the league. Nobody could score. This was, but at the end of the day, all these games are exciting. That's sort of, you know, when, when they get to the fourth quarter, you get a lot of exciting finishes. That was this game because, yeah. man, it was sloppy. It was ugly mistakes. And then you look up and it's just an exciting finish. The NFL, man, it uh, it, it just always delivers. It's incredible. You remember how long ago that was that we had like two straight weeks early in the yes. season? I don't know if it was like week three and four, or week four and five or something like that, where I remember Drew Dinsick and I said to each other for the first time, I was like, whew. Like that felt like work 
Sunday watching all those games because there was nothing specifically awesome about any of it. But you're right. So that's a great point that this sort of is a maybe an apropos way. And look, I it was it phenomenally enjoyable. It was. Um, but like I take someone who's not a better like my brother and you would think he watched the most dull thing in the world for the last four or five hours, <laughs> um, which clearly with those of us who had bets, we didn't feel that way because we right. were hanging on everything. If you're the Niners. I was just going to ask you this. Shanahan now not only 0 for 2 as the Niners head coach in the Super Bowl, obviously. The Buffalo the Bills. What's that? It's the, it's the modern Buffalo Bills. For anyone that's old enough to remember them losing four in a row, you start to wonder if this is just – if they're going to go down as the modern Buffalo Bills. Wow, I wasn't even going to go that far. Um, I was more like I was more like a Shanahan thing. Like he's 0 for 2 with the Niners. He was the offensive coordinator with the Falcons when they – squander the 28 to three lead. So there's definitely got to be something in his head at this point. The Niners are, I don't know if they're the bills of the eighties or the, excuse me, the bills of the nineties or the, or the Vikings of the seventies quite yet. It's certainly not four, it's two. And they seem so much more offensively. Di- well, no, the bills had their offensive weapons too. I shouldn't say that, but yeah, man, like God, I, this is the what this is the main thing I want to say. Let's go back to Christmas. And Todd and I, Todd Wishnev and I were watching these two games, these two teams on Christmas, Man. as everybody else was. But we were at Caesars watching the Chiefs get – this is before the Niners got rolled by the mm-hmm. by the Raiders. But the Chiefs got absolutely destroyed by the Raiders. Aiden O'Connell did not complete a pass in the first three qu- – in in, excuse me, in the last three quarters of that game, and the Raiders still won. They generated pressure on the homes without even trying – um, and if you had told us that day, if you had just whispered in our ear while that game was going on, oh, you yeah, don't worry about it. the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. We would have just been like, you got to be kidding me. There's no way. And yet here we are. Because he's Michael Jordan, man. He's Michael Jordan. Um, and, and I'll we'll end on that. We'll end on that after I, I want to ask you this or just um, – no, I mean, I'll go back to the Bills point. I, I think you can compare it to the Bills because – I mean, let's just go through it since 2019 – they have a 10-point lead with the ball against the Chiefs, the 49ers did, lose that Super Bowl. 2020, I think Garoppolo got hurt. You throw that year out. 2021, they're against the Rams in the NFC title game with a lead in the fourth quarter. So that's another NFC title game. 2022, NFC title game, Purdy gets hurt, and then this year you blow the Super Bowl. I mean, that's four chances. That's four times in five years. Uh, and yet, he look, he, he's had a 10-point lead in all of these Super Bowls, man. It's really um, – it, it's about as bad as it gets. It's about as heartbreaking it, get, it gets if, if you're a 49er fan. Wait, so it was 19 was the Super Bowl. Wait, yep. 2020, they lost that Super Bowl when they were up 10 in the fourth. You're right. Then it was – oh, right. Then it was the, the pandemic year, right? You're right. Okay. So it's – I keep forgetting. That year screws me up on yes. everything. So what was the year the year after that they lost to the Rams in the playoffs? Yes, the NFC title game with a lead in the second half. I think they are 10 uh, second half. And then last year the Eagles game where everybody yes. got hurt. Yeah. Yep. And then this year. About that, as tough window, as it gets. that window, man. Doesn't last forever. I mean, they got their quarterback, but you're we, we talked about the injuries. These guys can't stay on field. Right. right. And McCaffrey's not going to be great forever. Uh, last yeah. one before we get you out of here. There's going to be comparisons, Mahomes and Brady. Brady, it's funny. People, I think there's this notion that he won every year, every other year. He actually went 10 years without winning a Super Bowl. Is this going to be what it's like for Mahomes? Is he going to be back in this game next year and the year after? Is there going to be a lull at some point for Mahomes? What do you predict the next like five to eight years of Mahomes' career looking like? Well, as we sit here moments from the end of this game, where he's won his third of his career, third in third six years, fourth appearance, it's hard to imagine why you wouldn't bet them now to win it next year, just because you'll, as you say, you'll never get a better number. And why now at any point in the arc of an 18 week, 17 game NFL regular season, you should ever count them out. Right? Like the lesson of this season has got to be that like, it's just an exercise for this dude. And as long as he's in, he's in. And God help you at that point, which is sort of how we felt about Jordan. I remember after his first three titles and then he went away to play baseball, came back, you know, midseason, had that, you know, was beaten by Penny Hardaway and those guys with the magic when he came back that first season. But then 
that next year you just kind of knew, you know, well, you got to bet against this dude. Um, and so that's how he kind of feels. And I don't know, is, is he so good that, I mean, the Niners are just mega talented. They couldn't put him away. Couldn't do it. They just beat the Dolphins, Bills, Ravens, and Niners in consecutive weeks. There you, you, you deserve it. I should have I should have asked it this way. I should have refer, I should rephrase it. What would you put as an over under for a number of Super Bowls Mahomes won? Um, I mean, I think you have to put it at five and a half, don't you? I was thinking either five and a half or six and a half. I mean, he's probably going to get a couple more. I I wouldn't bet under five and a half. He's probably going to get a couple more. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be, I mean, five and a half, I think would be the perfect line for this, which is because it's so hard to win, but yet it's not, is it, it's, if you don't think it, he's going to win two more, it, I think he'll win two more. I'd be surprised if he didn't win two more. Yeah, I mean, at some point he's going to have a year where they're just, I don't know, he gets hurt. They lose in the wild card. You, you'd figure like he's not, he can't keep this up forever, but I mean, who would have thought he'd have the, the six year run he's had to start his career. It, it's incredible. Did you know when he was at Texas Tech? Did you know he'd be oh, this good? No, I remember when they tr- they traded up to draft for him. I was like, that's that never works. That, that you know the air it out system in college that never works in the pros. I thought that I thought it was a very strange trade. Uh, he was a turnover machine. I know his defense was bad, so they're like, oh, he had to force balls. But no, to answer your question, I never saw this coming in a million years. Did you? No, I did not. But I'll tell you, I you know, there's very few things like. In fact, I don't know of any other thing. But in all my in all of our years of surfing the net, uh, surfing the internet or just you know being being online there's one thing i so regret not saving which was some kid who was a student at texas tech wrote some article before that draft and i wish i had god i just i saw it once i read it once and i never thought to save it this kid was dead on he was like you guys don't understand what this guy is he is able to make plays when plays break down in a way that is unusual and special. And it was such an impassioned plea. And, it, you know, you can wave it off as homerism, right? At that time, so you're like, well, of course, you went to Texas Tech, you're a fan. But, man, everything he said turned out to be right. And uh, this guy is once in a generation, man. I mean, if it's not Brady, it's him. You got to give the nod to Brady because, after all, Brady's won seven at this point. And he's not even halfway there, which is just sick. Um, but but you're right in the sense that, I mean, Brady's cerebral. This guy's everything. Gilly, you're the best. We could talk about this game. It's one of those games you could just talk about for hours and hours. You will do that uh, Monday. And I'm not sure the ske- your schedule the rest of the week. Let everyone know where they can find you, though. Um, I'm doing the show Monday, tomorrow morning. And then I uh, I take my vacation as I do a uh, post-Super Bowl. So I'll be out. But um I will, uh, and then the Beating the Book podcast will return with Indian Wells, uh, and then March Madness. So what's nice about the the NFL season extending as far out as it does is we're just a stone's throw away from conference tournaments. So that's the next big thing, of course. Couple weeks away, Gil, you're the best man. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Will. Thanks for having me. All right, that will do it. Thank you to Gil Alexander. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back end of the week. We'll start to do some other things. And look, I mean, once football season ends with the extra week now, we're, we're not that far away from March Madness. We'll do some of that, some NBA, some baseball. We will mix and match here until uh, the sports calendar changes. And look, get a little more freedom out. We'll still do NFL, NFL draft. Anytime there's a big NFL offseason move, NFL will always be in the mix. But we'll start to do a little more things as the season has come to an end. Appreciate you guys listening. See you at the end of the week.